In this example problem, we're going to look at the section from example one, and we're going to check to see if, if the section meets minimum flexural reinforcement requirement checks from ACI 318. The first step is to calculate our nominal moment capacity. We've already done this in example one, so we're not going to uh, go through the, those steps again. You can refer to that video if you want more details. But we have our nominal moment capacity equal to 4,565 kip inches. And it's a tension controlled section. So when we factor it with our 0.9 fee factor, we have a factored nominal moment equal to 4,109 kip inches. Our next step is to calculate or gather all of our required section properties. And we're not given them here for this section. Uh, Typically, if you're using a, a precast pre-stress concrete section, it'll be a standardized section and you'll get these properties from a, a design chart. But here we need to calculate them. So we can calculate our, our gross moment of inertia, just 1 12th BH cubed. So 1 12th times 12 inches times 24 inches to the third gives us a gross moment of inertia of 13,824 inches to the fourth. Our gross area, just base times height, 288 square inches. Our centroid, we have a rectangular section, so our centroid is just going to be h over 2, or 12 inches. So that's the same distance from the top to the centroid or the bottom to the centroid. And then our section modulus is going to be our I gross 13,824 inches to the fourth divided by YB. Uh, 12 inches will give us a value here of 1,152 inches to the third. Our strand eccentricity, just the strand depth minus the distance between the centroid and the top of the section, which will give us 10 inches. And then finally, the tensile strength of our concrete, seven and a half times 1.0 for normal weight concrete times the square root of 5,000 PSI will give us 530 PSI or 0.53 KSI. Our next step is to determine the stresses in the pre-stressing after all pre-stress losses. So we're, we're using a, essentially something similar to the force and the tendon approach, uh, where we're assuming the pre-stressing uh, applied, is applied to our section as a, a force. So we need to take off all of our pre-stress losses. So we're not going to do this here. If you want more details on how to calculate pre-stress losses, you can look in some of our examples from module seven. But here we're just going to assume that we have a total pre-stress loss so our elastic shortening loss, creep loss, shrinkage and relaxation loss are, are going to be equal to 30 KSI. Our effective stress in the pre-stressing then is just the stress in the pre-stressing before transfer, 202.5 minus our total pre-stress losses, 30 KSI, which will give us a value here of 172.5 KSI. We can find our effective force in the pre-stressing then just by taking the area of our pre-stressing strands, 0.918 square inches, times that stress that we just found, the effective stress, 172.5, uh, which will give us a force here of 158.4 kips. We can then plug all these values in and uh, calculate our cracking moment. And to find our cracking moment, we first would develop a, an equation here for the bottom fiber stress, looking at our axial stress and our, our flexural stresses, and set that bottom fiber stress equal to the tensile strength of our concrete. Uh, M, M sub CR, our cracking moment, is our only unknown, so we can solve for that, and we'll get our, our cracking moment expression shown here. So then we can plug in our values, our cracking moment is going to be equal to our section modulus, 1,152 inches to the third, times 0.53 KSI, the tensile strength of our concrete, plus 
158.4 kips, effective pre-stressing force divided by our gross area, 288 inches squared, plus, now we need to take into account the moment caused by our uh, the eccentricity of our pre-stressing strands. So 158.4 kips times the eccentricity, 10 inches, divided by our section modulus here, 1,152 inches to the third. And we'll get our cracking moment then to be equal to 2,828 kip inches. So here's our, our M sub CR. Our code check is shown here. We need to make sure that phi MN is greater than 1.2 times MCR. So our phi MN we found to be equal to uh, 4,100 and nine kip inches. And 1.2 times our MCR is 1.2 times 2,828 kip inches, which will be 3,394 uh, kip inches. So we can see that 4,109 is greater than 3,394. So we're, we're okay. We, uh, this section here meets our minimum flexural uh, reinforcement check. And that concludes this example.